I want to talk about Tyler Holinsky with you uh, as a Washington State quarterback. We all uh, know what happened to Tyler and those who don't, a uh, 21-year-old young man taking his own life with an AR-15 out of the blue. I mean, just out of the complete blue to all of the people who knew him and loved him. And then uh, the Mayo Clinic checking him out to say that he had early stages of CTE in his brain. What are your thoughts on well, that? Well, first Brian? of all, the, the the first thought that comes to me is the the end the stigma mantra that we need to continue with. We have to, the stigma of what mental health is in this country is 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 one of weakness. We when we see it on the platform of people actually talking about it, we're like, oh, that must be changing. But really, in culture, it's not. It's it's seen as a weakness. We don't stand up as strong football players and say we're struggling with something. Or we don't see on movies or in the past that uh, the valedictorian or the most popular kid in the school or or the star quarterback is not standing in front of a group of his peers saying, hey, everybody, I'm, I'm struggling with this. Otherwise, I would have been that guy in San Diego, right? I would have stood up in front of my team and say, guys, I need your help. I, I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. I'm trying to be your leader Instead, I am just a mess, and I get backed into a corner, and I figure my only way out is to fight. Um, luckily for me, it, at that time, I I didn't have those suicidal thoughts. I got to that place, you know. When? About seven years ago, you know, at the height of my my substance abuse and just the, you know, no mental health treatment. You know, I was just I was self medicating. That's all the the substance was for me, and I was at that place. So when that night that it happened and I read about it, my first instinct was was anger because I was just at the Holiday Bowl. I just sat down at breakfast with those quarterbacks. With Tyler? And he knew what I had gone through, and yet he still didn't feel comfortable enough to – because I was, I was right there. I'd have been a guy that, that could have related to him. So that was what I was most angry about. I was also kind of resentful of myself that I hadn't reached out to Washington State sooner where I – said, let me come. I don't care, you know, what our past looks like. I want to – if I was standing in that room telling that group of men my story and talking about how it's okay, it's not a weakness, but actually the strongest thing you'll ever do is to be vulnerable and show that side of you, um, you know, maybe we're not sitting here with this now. It makes more sense now because of the diagnoses. And it, it kind of reaffirms something that I've been feeling and thinking for a long time. There's a lot of us probably who have played, whether it's in high school, college. There's just not enough data out there right now because we've studied all the brains of the NFL players who have died. Mm -hmm. But what happens when we test somebody's brain who's died at 30 or 40 years old of mental health issues? How much football did he play or how much head trauma did he have? So I believe that there's a lot of us, including me, that are living with some form of CTE right now. The difference is is that I think the substance abuse part for me made me address it and seek treatment and, in a, and find positive alternatives to what these symptoms look like because we can't diagnose this until post-mortem. But we do know what the symptoms look like now, and there are healthy alternatives to try to. The biggest reason is most people who have dealt with this issue, their answer was to take their own life instead of, finding a healthy alternative and what that may look like. And that's where we're at right now. And hopefully with this diagnosis, and I really think this is going to be a watershed moment when a 21 year old is diagnosed with that postmortem, that there's an issue and it's not just the NFL, but finding safer ways to play football in particular, what Brett Favre has been saying lately about removing the contact before you're at least 12. Ann and I have made the deal where, MacGyver can't wear a helmet until he's 15. And then we're going to give him all the information. And who knows what 15 years from now this will look like. Sure. But that's going to be our deal. We're not going to let him wear a helmet until he's 15. And then we're going to give him all the information we can and let him make that choice. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.